Hello, I'm Graeme Kelly, the CEO of the EW Tipping Foundation, and today we're very pleased to have Minister Mary Wooldridge join us for a conversation about leadership. So Mary, thank you for your time today. How would you describe your career? I have a saying that, that is a bit of a favourite saying. Um, when I was 16, I was an exchange student in Canada. Ice hockey was a, a very popular sport and there was a um, Wayne Gretzky, the number one goal scorer on the North American Ice Hockey League. Absolute legend. Um, and I don't usually like negative sort of things, but it's a double negative. He, he said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So if you don't have a go, um, you're never going to know if you can achieve it or not. We have to stretch ourselves, we have to have a go, you have to um, believe something is possible and then try and make it happen. Mary, your brother Michael Waldridge has played an important role in your life it would seem. Are there characteristics or values within your own family that have shaped your own leadership? I think um, mum and dad were always involved in the community as well as work and the family. Um, so I think that was the environment we grew up in. Um, mum volunteered a lot, took a lot of leadership roles, raised a lot of money, um, always engaged, uh, not only in the children and our school environments and our community environments, but also in a leadership role herself in that sense, and, and dad uh, similarly. Probably the, the main constant through all of it is my brother, um, who is 11 years older than me, but we are exceptionally close. We're very similar, uh, everyone says. And um, in a political environment, it's very unusual to have someone that you trust so completely to be able to go to for guidance and advice who actually understands and knows what it is you're going through. I mean, not a lot of people get elected. Not a lot of people have the opportunity to be a minister. Mary, when we had our most recent uh, interview in this series, it was with Bernie Geary. And Bernie and I were discussing people in the sector and your name came up. And Bernie said to me quite quickly that Mary's a person that just gets it. She connects you know, her head with her heart. That's lovely comments from, from Bernie Geary, um, who does a you know, fantastic job as the Commissioner for Children and Young People. Um, for me, connecting the head and the heart, the, the things that are important, um, is, is very much making sure that everything we do is grounded in a context of the people that we're doing the work for. So whether it's the introduction of the National Disability Insurance Scheme um, and the debates we have on a national level, um, for me, my perspective is always informed by and driven by um, the person with a disability that I've just met, the carer, the family member, um, those who are affected by it. And I, I think that's actually the shift that we're driving. Um, I think the human services system in the past has been um, very much driven more by bureaucratic organisational structures, funding streams or budget processes rather than that putting the client at the centre. And I think um, part of the reform that we're driving is seeking to do that, which many of the community service organisations have, have always known and done, but have been as well limited by the, the processes and structures that have uh, wrapped around that service delivery. Um, so um, I just find it incredibly motivating when you know the work that you're doing is going to make that difference. Mary commented earlier on the feedback that you get in your role and I know at times that can be difficult and even at times quite vehement. How do you use that feedback? Lots of people say you've got to have a th thick skin or don't read the media, don't read Twitter. Um, now that, that last piece of advice sometimes can be a bit helpful. Um, but uh, I actually take it on board and, and maybe I do take it a little bit too much to heart. But what I try and do is, is not look at the individual aspects of it, but understand the themes of what sits behind it. Because often um, people can be cruel and harsh, um, but that's everyone's right to be. But often behind it is something that's sitting that's a theme that is worth understanding, learning from, wondering why they'd have that perspective. And also, if it's a repeat theme, then then maybe there is something to be learnt and, and thought of as a result. Your leadership has been very helpful in the sector and your support for the development of the Harvard Club of Victoria Scholarship for not-for-profit CEOs has been an important part of the development in our sector. So that's something you're really proud of and what do you think we've got as a result? I have seen a um, couple of things. One, it gives a, a huge amount of respect to the work that CEOs in the disability sector are doing. Um, it's not a well-funded sector, we know that. It's not a sector that's had a lot of focus from a you know, group such as the Harvard Business School and its alumni. So I think it's been a real credit 
to the sector that they've stepped up and, and taken the opportunity um, and also given a confidence about um, the skills and capabilities that our CEOs do have um, and, and rubbing shoulders with the best. And I think um, we've seen both the group coming together as a bit of a, a leadership group um, across the sector, um, but also then utilising what they've learnt for the benefit of, of lifting the sector as a whole in terms of its uh, strategic approach, skills and capacities. Mary Wooldridge, thank you very much for your time.